One of the most important results in signal processing from the 20th century is firmly rooted in reproduced kernel hyperspaces, but most engineers really have no idea. This is the Shannon Nyquist sampling theorem. G.H. Hardy put it on firm theoretical foundations by introducing the Paley Wiener space. The Shannon Nyquist theorem says that if you take the spectrum of a signal, it's Fourier transform, and it's zero for all frequencies larger than some fixed frequency, i.e., band limited, then if you sample the function at a frequency greater than twice that of the fixed frequency, then the signal can be reproduced exactly from those signals. The Paley Wiener space with parameter A is precisely the space of continuous L2 signals where the Fourier transform of these functions is zero for frequencies with magnitude larger than A. As a Hilbert space, the Paley Wiener space comes with an inner product that is defined on the function's Fourier transform. We can quickly write down the inverse Fourier transform for a function from the space, and then instead of truncating to negative A to A, we can use the indicator function. Then if we do look at the truncation integral, we see that we can evaluate a function at a time point t through the inner product, if we can figure out what that function is that has this as a Fourier transform. The answer? the sync function. This means it's reproducing kernel since it reproduces function evaluation. What's really cool is that if we shift the sync function, this shift manifests as a change in the exponent here. Now, we know from classical Fourier series that if we select some particular exponents, that the corresponding exponentials are actually an orthonormal basis over L2 of this interval. Correspondingly, these shifted sync functions form an orthonormal basis for the Paley Wiener space and every function in the space can be expanded like this, with these inner products here. This works for any orthonormal basis, but in this case, the inner products are just the values of f evaluated at these center points. And so, we just reconstructed f from its samples. And the frequency of these samples depends on the bandwidth of the original signal. Piece of cake. Now, if you want to see more details, I have a much older video that does this with a bit more care, and you can find it here. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, please consider subscribing. Either way, I hope you have a great day.